Welcome back! In the last video I showed you how to write a Linux kernel module which will register a device number and how to create a device file which is connected to this device number. In this video I want to show you two more things. One thing I want to create the device file inside my kernel module and not in the bash um, as I did last time. And the second thing I want to do is I will want to add a read and write callback so we can write data to our driver and read them back. Yeah, and that's it. So here you can see my GitHub repository where I put all my source codes in. Feel free to download it, modify it, and make anything you want with it. And now let's go back to our Raspberry Pi. So I'm connected over SSH and as you can see here I have two um, folders for the two Linux kernel modules I have already created and now let's just copy the code from the last time and create a new folder. Read write I would call it and let's go into this folder and here we have the source code for our kernel module, a makefile for our kernel module, and this was just a um, test program I used last time. I won't need it any longer, so I can remove it. Okay, and now let's just rename device number into read write, and I have to change the thing in the um, makefile as well. Oh, and of course I have to give it the .c ending. Okay, now now it's okay. So I will do two things here. One thing is I will add the support for a, um, for a automatically generation of the device file and the linking with the device number, and I will add a buffer here if we were right with your writing um, to the device file, um, it will update the values in the buffer and if we read from the device file, it will return the last thing we have written into it. So first I will need some um, some includes here, cdef and uaccess. Okay. So I'm needing some variables to store my buffer data. So I will create a buffer for data here. And I will just use a char array here, buffer, which is 255 bytes big. And I will declare a buffer pointer here. And after a read, um, it will point to the last character which was written into the array. And now we have to create two callback functions, one for reading, one for writing. I will stop with the one for reading data out of the buffer. Read data out of the buffer. Static size t driver read, okay, you can name it any name you like. I will choose driver read. So this first input parameter contains information about the file you want to read to. User buffer. Okay, this buffer is the destination we want to put the data in. And this variable represents so size of the buffer. Okay, and we need this last variable here, but I won't use it. Okay, I have to declare some variables to copy, not copy delta. And the first thing is get amount of data to copy.
and we say um, the minimum value of count for the buffer pointer will be the number of bytes we want to copy. For example, if we have written five bytes into our buffer, our buffer pointer will be here on five, but if you just want to read out if this buffer is only three bytes big, um, we will just copy three bytes. Okay. And now we'll copy data to user. Here you have to watch out, we can't just use um, mem copy or things like that because the kernel and the user space uses different memory regions. And so we, ha we have to use copy to, the copy to user command. Okay, and this command will return the amount of the amount of bytes it hasn't copied. User. So we have to give our destination first, then our, um, the source from where it should copy, and then the amount of bytes we want to copy. And the return value of um, this function is the number of bytes it has copied. So delta is to copy minus not copied. If everything works fine, this will return the amount of data it, it has read out of our buffer. In the worst case, it will return um, for example, if it couldn't read a single byte, it will return zero, and the whole thing will. Oh, wait, or it will, this will return five, and the whole thing will return zero or a value different to the value the user is expecting. Okay, and now let's do. Ah, and of course, we have to return the value. And let's do. The same thing for writing. Okay, I will just copy this thing here. Good. I will call it write. And the write function has exactly the same arguments as um, as the read function. The only difference is this time the user buffer is our source and not the destination, so I have to set it to const char pointer. But everything else is quite similar. Here, we, as our buffer is um, 255 bytes big, we can only copy 255 bytes into it. So I have to change this value here. Okay, and now I have to change it from copy from user. From user. The first argument is our destination. So in this case, it's buffer. And then our source, which is a user buffer, and the amount of data to copy. And we will set buffer pointer to copy. So this will return us the right value for the read case. And the same, the rest is just the same. Okay. So now let's add our callbacks here. Read this value. Read, write, describer, write. And now, if we try to compile this program, if I haven't made a mistake, it should work. Okay, yeah, just warnings, everything's good. <laughs> so it worked. Great. But we're not done yet. Okay, we could load this module, we could um, 
create a device file with mknode, but I want to create the device file this time inside my Linux kernel module. So let me open it again. And I will declare some variables here. For device and device class. Okay, so I need a um, static dev t i device number. Okay, so this variable should contain my device number. Class my class. Okay, and this is the device class I want to create. Struct ctf my device. And this here is a struct which contains all the information about the device we're going to create. Okay. So I will go into my initialization um, module initialization function and let me just relative number and let me just delete these lines here. Okay. This time we won't use a static um, device number. Um, we just let the system decide which device number is free and it should allocate its device number. So the first thing we have to do is allocate a device number. Okay, we can use the function alloc chardev region and my device number. Okay, here we say we need um, one minor device number and driver name. This should be a macro. I hope so. <laughs> Let me double check it. Just give me a second. No, I was wrong. It isn't a macro. We have to define it here. So um, I will go up here and create some defines here. Driver name. Let's call it dummy driver. And a define for driver class my module class. Okay, so we're back here. And if the function alloc for that feature um, returns zero, a zero pointer, something went wrong. No, if it returns, sorry, if it returns a value which is Negative, something went wrong. Could not be allocated. And in this case, we will return minus one. Okay. But um, if it was successful, so my read write um, device number major minor was registered. Okay, and this should be our my device number shifted by twenty and my device number okay so the next step is to create a device class so my class we need the class create function and we have to point our class pointer here my class No, sorry. This module driver class now. Sorry. 
and if the whole thing returns now, something went wrong. Print k device class cannot be created. And in this case, we'll go to class error. What? I'm using go to here, but you shouldn't use go to in C programming. Yeah, that's true, but for Linux kernel driver, it is really damn useful. And I will show you this just in a second. Just let me define it here. So, unregister def my device number driver name and in this case I will return minus one return zero and why it's so useful to use go to here I will show you in just a minute but for now let's create now we have created the device class now we can create the device file Okay, so if we need the function cdef add, no, device create, sorry, device create my device null my device number ah, I made a typo here my device number now driver name so if this returns now an error occurred Cannot create device file, and then we will go to go to file error. And now I can show you why it's so useful to use go to here, because imagine I will add here the file error. And in this case, we have to destroy our the class we have created. So, and now imagine we uh, error occurred up here. Then it will jump down here and will only unregister um, the device number. If an error occurred down here, it will go here and it will destroy the class and unregister the device number. And so it's very easy to uninitialize everything because um, if you would do, if you would return say okay here return minus one you would have to write two lines of code here one line of code here and in the next initialization step it would be three lines and this is much more comfortable and this is why you can use go to in Linux device drivers. Okay, and the last step we have to do is. Um, Initialize device file. Initialize device file if ctf add my device my device number one minus one. Okay, so here we are adding a character device with um, everything we have stored into the my device struct with the device number my device number and we want just to create one here and this will add us a device into the slash dev folder okay and hopefully no error occurs here print k okay. um, registering of device to Kernel failed, and in this case, we we'll go to add error. 
Evet. So device destroy my class my device number and I for oh sorry I forgot step here um with registering so at first we have to init our device and give it um, our file option operations. So here we are assigning it and here we are registering registering um, device to kernel. Okay, so this is the right thing to do. Okay, and of course everything we've done here we have to do in our initializing method too. So let me just copy it here. Okay, we have to delete our device file. File. Then we have to destroy our device. We have to destroy our class. We have to unregister um, our device number, and that's it. Okay, I'm quite sure I've made a typo or a mistake anywhere in the code, so let's try to build the program here. Okay, yeah, we have some errors here. My device file. Okay, of course, I just call it my device. Add error, use but not defined. Okay, let's take a look again at it. Of course, here it has to be. Add error. My device file. I just called it my device. Let's try to build it again. Okay, of course, no, no signs it defines. My device. Oh, I'm a little bit dizzy today. Okay, we still got some errors. Error, device create, device create. Okay, this has to be my, my class and not my device. Create class. Okay, come on. Maybe this time. Yeah, okay, we were finally able to build it. So now let's load it. Read write top gauge o error. Okay, let's see what went wrong. Registering of device to kernel failed. Okay, so let's take a look what happened here. Registering of device to kernel failed. Registering. Here I have a typo too. And my device. My device number. Ah, okay. <laughs> if it is equal to minus one, then an error occurred. Okay, let's do it again. And let's reload it. Okay, we reloaded it successfully. Let's look at, we have a dummy driver here. Yeah, yeah here's our device that we have created automatically. So let's change the permissions. Dev dummy driver. Okay, now let's write some text to it. This is a test. Dev dummy driver. Okay, and now let's try to get it back. Tail one. Oh head, sorry, head. Death dummy driver. This is a test. Okay, let's do it again. Cans are awesome. 
and you see it works. And if we look at the kernel log here, Taylor. Okay, we can see here open was called, close was called, and everything worked fine. Great! So now we have created a Linux device file within our Linux kernel module, and in the next video we can finally write our first real Linux driver for GPIOs. See you there. Goodbye.